We're here with Edward Kitsis and Adam Horowitz, executive producers of Lost. And this is an exclusive Man About Madison blog with the entire interview uh, with these two gentlemen here. So enjoy. Guys, when was the first time you knew that you had this cult phenomenon on your hands? Well, we were actually, um, we were actually brought into the show in uh, the middle of season one. We were actually on another show. And we got a call from Carlton Cuse. We were up in Vancouver working on the show. And Carlton Cuse was a friend of ours, called us. And he said, do you guys know Lost? And we had just at that point seen the first four episodes. And we were like, yeah, who hasn't seen Lost? He's like, how would you like a job on it? So we actually came in as fans. Joining the show as fans in the middle of the first season, it was like head spinning one to sort of like kind of get all up to speed and to start working on it. But it was it was incredibly yeah. humbling to see the reaction the show had already gone. And still gone. gets, which is great. When you watch, when a lot of us at home watch these episodes, you're like, wow, I don't know how they're going to get themselves out of this one. And then all of a sudden everything comes, you know, falls yeah. into place and you're like, it doesn't make sense, but it makes perfect sense at the exact same time. I mean, where do you guys even get these ideas? I don't know where we get them, but um, I can tell you that we always strive to paint ourselves in a corner because we feel like we're most creative once we're in a corner and trying to figure our way out of it. And that's kind of how we, every year for the show, we try to make it different. We lock ourselves in a little room and don't let ourselves out until it makes sense. <laughs> you know, I mean, no, I mean, I'm only half joking. It's a little room and all the writers are in there and we just like sit in there just trying to, to, to figure it out. You have uh, probably one of the shows on television um, that people actually are just, you know, feverish in terms of trying to get information. Yeah. So, I mean, it must be like, you know, how the FBI grills people. I mean, they, you have people probably grilling you all the time. Well, we, we get grilled a lot. Um, and I... now that it's the final season, I get more of threats. Uh, then it used to just be like, what's the smoke monster? What's this? And now it's like, you better not screw it up. <laughs> oh, you're going to answer everything, right? You're answer Get everything. That and, and we're like, oh, you know, I, I just don't know. Did you think it was going to be that big to be like having that much, you know, blogs, having like all these things dedicated to lost? Uh, no. I no. mean, there's no way you, you can. You never anticipate or, or, and hopefully you never try to do that. You just, you, know, you just try to tell the best story you can. You know, what's interesting is the community of lost kind of happened, you know, on its own and it sort of grew on its own and and that was really cool but there was no way we could ever sit down and say oh we're gonna make a show so interesting you know because we're just trying to you know uh, tell the best story we can yeah. so everything after that was just it's really the fans and I think we have probably the greatest fans you know no, we, of we, any show on TV we're the most amazing fans ever and it's just it's always always humbling to see just how you know energetic, excited, and engaged they get with the show. Do they have influence on the show? Do you sometimes like, you know, hear from your fans of like, hey, that's kind of an interesting idea, or say like, oh, they really don't like this character. Well, the the truth of the matter is, is we start writing the show in June, and so by the time the show airs in January, we're already 13, 14 episodes in. So it would be too late to hear what they say. I'll be honest with you, season five when we were doing time travel, we thought they will hate this. They will hate this, but you know, at least it gives us a year for the final season. Maybe we can win them back. So when it aired and people loved time travel, we realized we don't know anything. We just do what we think is cool. We write the show like fans. After season one, we were doing a, a DVD signing for the season one DVD, and I was sitting next to Damon, and um, and there was a line of people coming up to give their DVDs to sign. And one woman gave her DVD to Damon and said, you know, oh, what's in the hatch? And Damon signed a DVD and said, inside the hatch is a man who's pushing a button every 180 minutes of the world. And she looks at it and goes, oh, stop it, and walked away. And she had the answer. <laughs> and the answer. we always joke, because one person out there had the answer six months before everyone yeah. else. But they just don't, you know, they, no one believes us. Well, like you said, you guys are also fans of the show, and you guys have, like, lived the show and, yeah. you know, have been part of it for six whole seasons now, right? Mm -hmm. So how hard is it to not just keep going? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to not keep going with the people that we've worked with, right. but we've always felt that the best show is the one that ends in six seasons because then we get to complete our story. I think all of us were terrified like that if the show continued we wouldn't be able to maintain the quality that we were trying to maintain so I think it was while really sad to have to see it go I think it's the best thing for the show. Yeah. You guys are working on movies now. I mean, yeah. yeah. So is, is, is it the, how's the transition from going from TV to film? Um, it's a different challenge. It's a different set of rules. And but you know, for us, we're just you know, at heart, we're storytellers. So you know, getting to tell a story in TV or movies, you know, they're all great to us. You guys ever going to come back to television after movies or? Sure. Um, we would love I think to. yeah. We you know, for us, we love both. 
for us, I think we know that we'll never experience anything like this again. It's just unique. So we're just trying to enjoy that. And before we can really think about the next thing, we just want to let it run its course. Again, I'd like to thank Edward and Adam for doing this interview. And uh, again, check out my blog, Man About Madison, for more adventures. And go Badgers, right, guys? Go Badgers. All right. See ya.